So this is Crybaby Seminole Homestead and I'm doing a quick video here to show you what I got from M.I. Gardener back when his seeds were on sale. Now he's right now just opened up a bunch of new seeds that are available and seeds are now available to buy online. But this is, I went crazy and I bought a bunch of seeds back when, um, when they were on sale for just a real good bargain there. I think they were a dollar a packet at the time. Right now they're two dollars a packet. And if you, there's some other kind of types that are a little bit more, but most of his seed packets are $2 a packet. Um, I happened to get in on the deal at the end of the season and got the 2023 seeds for only a dollar a package. So let's go ahead and break this open and see what we have inside here. I'm going to start with a smaller package and I'll go ahead and um, snip this open and see what we have. Looks like a lot of different varieties in there. Let's see what we have. Okay, let's make some sense of this. In my order, it came with this cute little card. If you get one of these, don't forget to look at it because there is a coupon code on the back. And it saves me 10% um, off my next order. So these little cards have coupons. Make sure that you keep them if you get one. I've been holding on to this so when I had time to share with you guys, but I ordered this back in mid-July and it was magically packaged by Elle and my gardener. And I have pages on my receipt. Like there's four pages. So let's go ahead and see what we have. I think I'm going to quickly put these in alphabetical order. That will help me to keep them straight and not see them redundantly because some of them I did get more than one package. So I'll be really quick and I'm going to put these in alphabetical order. I roughly laid out some of the varieties, but I'm starting to think I'm going to go ahead and unbox the other box as well because alphabetically some of them might overlap. So let's get into that as well. But all kinds of varieties here. So many different types of seeds. I think this is probably enough for one gardener. Um, this is definitely not all I have. Um, and I just like to replenish my seed stock. So I always have fresh, living, vibrant seeds. But I'm constantly using the old ones first before I use my new ones. On this order, you can see I ordered September 17th. And it was joyously packed by Jojo and my gardener. And it's a full container, so I'm going to go ahead and start alphabetizing these. I'm just kind of sorting approximately in the alphabet where they belong. Just to make the process a little bit easier on myself. There's so many seeds in here. It's wonderful. It's so satisfying. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. I guess I need a lot of black magic kale. <laughs> Some beans. Corn, celery, beans, beets, more beets, corn. And I've been talk talking to you guys for a while, if you're new to the channel, um, about food security. And um, one of the issues being GMO um, seeds. So you definitely want to get some heirloom seeds or even hybrid seeds are okay as long as they are non-gmo wow there's so many more seeds look at all that so many more i'm going to move some of my um end of the alphabet seeds off the tray so i can get more organized here there's 
so many things. I don't know. This is so satisfying to me. It's like beyond Christmas. It's like to me such a joy to go through seeds to know that I have these and to know that I'm not going to have an issue not having them and knowing that I have this many I can be generous I was also thinking of maybe doing some cut flower arrangements and selling them for really cheap I think it'd be really pretty as well just kind of rustic and cute roadside, roadside stand Shasta daisies. Oops, I should go on this side. Asters. Those are so pretty. More peas. That's not true spinach, but it's a spinach substitute. Which might be superior. I haven't tasted it yet, but I'm really excited about it. So there's lots of things called spinach, like um, this Egyptian spinach. Um, New Zealand spinach and Malabar spinach those are not spinach um, but they can take the place of it I guess I'm not sure taste wise how they taste similar or not but maybe in the place functionally and a slow bowl of lettuce okay I'm going to clear all of the end of the alphabet off and then we'll get all this sorted so I put O through S back in the box and this is just a through R and I'm going to go ahead and organize this really quickly. It's amazing how much time this does take, um, but you need to know where your seeds are. Um, one of the problems too is if you don't know where your seeds are, you're doomed to buy them in duplicate. So you definitely want to spend the time to get them organized. putting all the corn off the side, all the melons and beans off to the side because there's so many of those types. I'm keeping on with my work. I keep considering how to organize my seeds and I have multiple totes full of them. One thing I was thinking about is like the arugula and like am I going to put it in alphabetical order or something else. So I'm thinking I'm going to separate anything that I would consider to be greens, like salad greens. I'm going to separate and organize them separately. So like arugula is going to be off to the side. And then like amaranth technically is an edible green and a grain. But whenever I think of am amaranth, I think of flowers. So I'm going to keep them with the flowers alphabetized. So I have amaranth and aster. And then I will grab the nasturtium if I can find them. Since this is such a, me a mess over here, I'm going to go ahead and rubber band them together. Or I also have some clips. Um, just so I don't have to keep starting over because they keep sliding around. So I'm going to have this alphabetized and then also like greens as one thing. Corn as another. Be uh, beans. Um and squash will be separate because I just have so many different varieties. Everything else will be um, um, in alphabetical order. I'm also coming across many different kinds of beans in this particular order. So I'm going to organize them by bush bean versus runner and pole beans. I'm going to put runner and pole beans together because they need vertically um, vertical trellising. And then the bush beans don't need that. So that's how I'm going to separate them. I think I'm liking these paper clips um, or these binder clips for keeping my beans from slipping and sliding around. And also, if I ever wanted to, I could hang them up as well. It'd be easy to get them without having them knock over. So if you're not sure if it's a runner bean or a bush bean, um, and if it's not in the name, like these Mayflower beans, down here when it says plant spacing, plant size, it says five to six feet vines. So that is a vining type. And then the provider beans. It says eight to 20 inch bush. So that's a bush bean. 
I think I'm going to mark them. Yeah, let's do that. So I wrote down that the provider beans are bush bean and that the Mayflower beans are, are vining type or they are pole beans or runner beans. And obviously with the sunset runner is in the name, that's a vining bean. And that one says it's five to eight foot vines. Purple hole peas are actually beans. And that one is a bush bean. I have this box, which is going to be just temporary, temporary housing for these seeds because my other containers are full. I might have some other varieties of beet seeds, but I'm going to go ahead and put these together. I've got three types right here. And my favorite type is the golden beet. And I don't see it in this order, but I do have some elsewhere. So temporarily, I'm going to just have them clipped together because the rubber band is not tight enough. They just, it's, they just fall out. You have to have a little bit of a bulk for the, the, for the um, rubber bands to stick. So I'm going to put it like this for now. I did find some other varieties of asters. I went ahead and organized those. But I also have some different types of cucumbers. Ashley, Bait Alpha, National Pickling, Puna Kira, and Little Potato. I might have mispronounced some of those. And I'm going to clip these as well. Actually, rubber band worked well for these because they had enough packages so that they won't fall out. I can't believe I found a typo. So on here, it says that this can be popped like popcorn or turned into flour and they use the wrong kind of flour it's f-l-o-u-r so this could be popcorn or for flour for the glass gem i use it just as an ornamental because it's so pretty but if things are rough then you could use it as popcorn or grind it and make it into flour f-l-o-u-r so i have two packages each of these two different types of dent corn Trucker's Favorite Yellow and Hickory King White. I'm going to pack them together, but I would not grow them together. And I did write, so I'm going to go ahead and put the corn seeds away. So I've got them all packaged up. I'm going to organize the cabbage, the several different kinds of cabbages and collard greens I got all together. Because I that's how I grow them and that's how I use them. So that's going to be one little batch here. And I got four different kinds of carrots. Those are going to go together. I get these clips from the Dollar Tree. They're super handy for organizing. I'm going to bundle the rest of my brassicas together. And I've got some cat grass, chervil, regular chives, and garlic chives. And those are going to get organized together. And I thought about putting garlic chives under G, but I, I will remember that it will be under C for chives. Garlic chives and then the regular chives. And cat grass for the kitties. I'm really loving the idea of clamping them so they're not falling all over the place. That's going to be so handy. And the, my current organization system, there's not enough space to use clamps. Um, I have them so tightly packed already, so these are my overflow seeds, and I'm going to have them super organized for later on. And I'm going to bundle the edible chrysanthemum and the upland crest together as well with my seeds. And I'll add my celery in with the same batch. I missed one of the broccoli, so I better put that in with the other ones just like it. Reorganizing is so much easier with the clips. I really love to grow something that's unique. So if I'm going to grow broccoli, I'm going to grow purple broccoli and Romanesco broccoli. Isn't that beautiful? Lovely. I'm going to put, put the borage in with the flowers. So the flowers are going to go in the front all together. So I don't have to go digging for them. To make it super clear, I'm going to go ahead and use this clothespin and I wrote flowers on it. So I'll remember that they're not, they're not going to be alphabetized because they're going to skip from amaranth to like 
Brussels sprouts or whatever. So I have all the flowers in here that I just got. And you guys, I have so much more than this. This is just the, what I just ordered. This is how it's looking right now. So I'm going to put like the three sisters, corn, squash, and beans on the right side. And then everything else is alphabetized um, accordingly. The sunflowers are going to go with three sisters for the squash, um, beans, corn, and sunflowers. It's like four sisters. I've got a couple different kinds of eggplants. I have arugula, miner's lettuce, um, endive, and hansai thai. Probably saying that wrong. I'm going to just bundle them, bundle them together as um, just greens. And of course, lettuce I would consider greens too, but they can have their own category because there's so many packages, and as well as kale. For kale in this order, I got Premier Kale, Black Magic, Feathered Frills, and Red Russian. For lettuce, I've got the Bronze Mignette, Great Lakes Crisp Head, Hanson Improved Crisp Head, Iceberg, Lola Rosa Leaf, Oak Leaf, Pablo, Paris Island Romaine, and oops, Red Romaine, Red Sails Leaf, Slow Boat Lettuce, Slow Bolt, Super Red Romaine, oh I should put that one with the other Romaine, and Tango. So this is going to go with the other Romaines. And I have them alphabetized within the lettuce types. And I want to kind of tap it down so that the seeds are at the bottom so when I pinch it at the top I'm not damaging the seeds. There you go. And I think I'm going to do a rubber band for this one. If I'm going to use a rubber band, I do want to kind of equally distribute the seeds so that they can kind of stand up nicely. And there we go for that lettuce. I found the nasturtium. I'm going to go ahead and add it in with the flowers. I've never actually grown kohlrabi. Um, but it says cabbage flavored, so I'm going to put this with the cabbage. I came across some soybeans, and those are going to go with the bush beans. So you can tell here that my family really likes onions, and they're so medicinal and healthy for you, um, and really good for, you know, if you're sick. So um, every kind of broth and um, soup has onions. So I have the Bianca. I've got, okay, let's see what else we've got. So we've got the Bianca. Um, hold on. Bianca, Crystal White. Um, Nabucca, Evergreen, and the Pompeii. So I've got several packages of each, a couple of each, and then several of some. And I'm going to go ahead and put those away. I'm really loving these paper fasteners. Um, these clamps are working really, really nicely. And if I had like hooks on a wall, you could also hook them up. That would be a cute idea as well, especially if you're going to just like grab them, go, put them back really easy. I'll probably put up a couple hooks um, in the springtime so that whenever I don't have them put away, the ones I have out are hanging up and then I could put them away. This is what it's looking like so far. So I've got beans on the side, beans, corn, sunflowers onions here and I've got everything from the flowers all the way back through the grains and the lettuce. I've got more to do though. I found some more sunflowers to organize. So I organized these by Black Russian and Sunspot. I also have mammoth sunflower seeds somewhere and that's the kind that I would want to grow for us or like the gray striped. Um, they're really large type. These would be more for just decoration and maybe for wildlife. 
Got some P's here, tall telephone pole or telephone P and cold and sweet. And I'm using rubber bands because they're pretty bulky. I found some more flowers, several different kinds of snapdragon, shasta daisies, and marigolds. Those are going to go in with the flowers. I swapped out the um, clothespin for one of these clamps just because this is a little bit thicker and a little harder for it to stay. And um, the wooden clips work a lot better for just a few packets. If you have a lot, then these work better. Or the paper binder clips work really good. And this was, is what it looks like so far. It's kind of cool because it can kind of stand up by themselves. I've got quite a variety of radishes. So I've got the white icicle, watermelon, which doesn't taste like watermelon, obviously. Some people will kind of get confused. It just looks like that because of coloring. Um, purple plum, kale stone, French breakfast, which is much more like normal, what we normally have. And then a bunch of these black Spanish, which I thought were just super interesting. I am definitely going to buy more of the clips. I think the rubber bands are kind of old. I think they're going to fall apart. But for now, I'm going to have rubber bands. And I'll come back with clips on another day. I've got so many types of Swiss chard. I've got the Ford Hook Giant. The Lucillus. I'm not sure how to say that. Uh, magenta. Be careful if you're not sure about like rhubarb versus Swiss chard. Rhubarb has key differences, but it can look similar if you're going with a red type. So a rhubarb has poisonous, toxic leaves, but an edible stem. So this chard has edible leaves, stems, and if it's a beet, then it has edible roots. But um, be very careful if you're growing, especially if you have kids. Uh, rhubarb and Swiss chard can look similar if you're going with a red variety. Um, the leaves look strikingly different, but you have to know your stuff. So um, if I were you to begin with, I would use a type that's not red because um, I've got like the yellow, the orange, the ruby red. This is beautiful, but somebody who's a beginning gardener could get these confused with, with um, uh, rhubarb and that would be very deadly. So Swiss chard is not even closely related to rhubarb but because of the red stock on the ruby red types um it could be confusing if you don't know what they look like um so get a different color like yellow or white i'm gonna put those together i'm gonna add the sorrel to like the mixed greens same thing with salad burnet and the purslane and the red shiso but i'm going to put all of the different types of spinach and anything that has the name spinach in it like egyptian spinach um those are going to go together separately and so they'll be in the same area but kind of organized in that group so i've got the egyptian spinach and the regular spinach I've got some par parsnips and turnips, and I'm going to put these next to where I have the onions because they are root crops. I'm going to organize my tomatoes, tomatillos, and peppers in the same area. So I kind of want to show you the tomatoes I got. I got the Abe Lincoln, Amana or Amana, Azo, Azo, how do you say that? Azochka? I don't know. A small red cherry, and I'm organizing it by the word cherry, black prince, evergreen, old German, and I'm organizing it by German, gobstopper, gold nugget, gra granny, cantrells, great white, green grape, green sausage. Hartman's Yellow Gooseberry, Santa Marzano, I'm organizing it by Marzano, Matt's Wild Cherry, couple of those, Mountain Princess, Persimmon, got a couple of those, Powers, Baby Roma, I'm organizing it by Roma, Silver Fir Tree Tomato, whoops, 
This one should be before that one. This one should be before that one too. Rose. Then silver. Stupus. Subarctic. Got a couple. Tommy Toe. Trophy. Valencia. White Cherry. And Yellow Stuffer. So these I'm going to need a rubber band for because I'm running out of my clips. I'm going to have to buy some more clips. And I'm going to put the tomatoes, eggplants, tomatillos, and peppers on the same spot because I have to start them so much earlier than everything else. I have a lot of other peppers somewhere else, but just for now I bought the Anaheim, Carabelle, Corno di Toro, Yellow, Mulatto, Isleno, Pepper, Grand Rio Verde, Verde, bleh, Grand Rio Verde, Tomatillo, and Purple Tomatillo. And I am giving them two different clips so that I can find my tomatillos later. This is how it's looking right now. So I've got flowers, broccoli, um, different cabbages, cat grass, and other things that are mixed together in order. Um, edible chrysanthemum, cucumbers, which I might re reorganize cucumbers by my squash and pumpkins and melons. Um, eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, tomatillos. Here I have all roots. So I have beet, carrot, onions, um, parsnip, turnips, radishes. Here I have all my greens. So I have like all the mixed greens, different, many different types. And then I have kale, lettuce, Swiss chard, and different kinds of spinach and spinach substitutes. And then over here I have beans, peas, corn. And I'm not sure in sunflowers how I'm going to fit the squash in here. I might need to put the squash behind the lettuce. We'll see. I'm going to organize the squash by summer squash versus winter squash. So for the summer squash, I've got the crookneck, lemon, green scallop. Got a couple of those. Yellow scallop. These mature so fast. Black Beauty Zucchini and Italian Striped Zucchini. And these are all bush, the bush for formation. Um, so that's not going to take up as much space and they're much faster to produce. Summer squash. And for the squash, um, I only have two packets of the winter bush, Table King bush acorn squash. And those are a bush type. The rest of these are going to be vining types, and they're all winters. So I've got Black Futsu, Baby Boo Pumpkin, which is just, for me, it's just for ornamental. Is it edible? The flavor is sweet, uh, deep sweet, and very string-free. So I guess it is a good one for pies. But I thought it was super cute. Um, Gil's Golden Pippin Squash. It's a winter vine. Golden Hubbard, got several Golden Hubbards, and there's a reason for that. Okay, um, delicious in pies, cut into serving size pieces and baked, steamed, broiled, or mashed. So it seems pretty versatile. And it says it's easy to grow and very prolific. That's why I got so many. Kabucha squash, musk de Maroc. And Waltham Butternut. So I probably butchered some of those names. My apologies. But these are going to get all um, rubber banded up. Here are the melons I chose. Banana melon. Hale's Best Jumbo Cantaloupe. Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe. Rocky Four Cantaloupe. Which looks to me like a honeydew. But we'll see how it tastes. Um, the Green Flesh Honeydew. Noir Days Carm Carms. Oh my goodness, you guys, I can't even read. Um, melon, watermelons. We've got Cal Sweet, 
Charleston Gray and Jubilee and Moon and Stars. So those are all going to go together. And I've got some Lucy Goosey C packs. I've got the Saltwort, Goji Berries, Black Sesame, Lemon Mint, Fennel, and Lemongrass. And those are going to go to the left side in alphabetical order. And here is how it looks. I am super tired, but I've got the flowers and all the brassicas, loosey goosey stuff over here. Then I've got all of my things I need to start early, like my eggplants, to peppers, tomatoes, tomatillos. Um, I got all my um, all my greens and leafy crops here, and then I've got all of my root crops there. Then here I have all my beans and peas and sunflowers. And then I have all my corn, melons, cucumbers, and squash and pumpkins. So that is, so this is ready to be put away and took a bit of time, but I'm so glad I got these. These are my backups. And as I'm going through my other seeds, I'm going to make sure that I use the oldest ones first and get a rotation system under control. So these are to refill the spots I have that I'm missing other places. And I'm going to use the old ones before I use any of the new ones. All right, everybody, God bless. I hope you noticed some tips I use, like using these. These are very helpful. Honestly, these are great. These are awesome. You can get packages of these, like a dozen or something from the Dollar Tree. I don't think you get quite as many of these, but I love these as well. So um, those are great. One perk about the clothespins is you can draw on them or write words on them. One downside is that they're pretty long, and if there's lots of packets, it doesn't work as well. So these are great. Um, either the colorful, they're plastic coated wires, or the binder clips. Those are fabulous. So I think I'm going to go to a system like this. It makes it much easier, more accessible. I've got those totes that I got from uh, Michael's. They come with like multiple different colors. I think they're really pretty and I have them alphabetized, but then I have to open up each individual container to go through them. And I've got multiple containers, A through Z. So it's like A through Z and then there's like a half a dozen of them. So um, having something like this where it's just easy to get to it and then I replenish it from other stock, I think is going to be very, very helpful in organizing my seeds. So I'm interested how do you organize your seeds and i mean if you have a lot of seeds i'm really interested because if you only have a little bit it's it's easy you could use a recipe holder for those or a shoe a shoe holder or something um or just one of those plastic totes with individual um containers which i've had many 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 of those i'm looking for if you have massive amounts of seeds how do you organize them so that you're not constantly accidentally buying duplicates. Now I purposely buy duplicates at times, but how do you minimize some uh, accidental repurchasing? And then how do you ensure that your seeds are being used in the old, as the age, as they age out? So for instance, I have totes that I have from years ago. I'm going to make sure I use those before I touch these at all. Unless there's a variety in here that I don't have already, that's the only time I'm going to like supersede my rotation. All right. So the reason why I got these seeds together was because I am concerned about food security and um, the safety of our seeds in terms of keeping them non-GMO, um, the prevalence of bioengineered materials and foods. I call them materials or products, not even food. Um, and so the only way to know that you're getting something healthy is to grow it yourself. God bless you. Live long and prosper. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye everyone. White cherry and yellow stuffer. So these I'm going to need a rubber band for because I'm running out of my clips. I'm going to have to buy some more clips. And I'm going to put... The tomatoes, eggplants, tomatillos, and peppers on the same spot because I have to start them so much earlier than everything else. I have a lot of other peppers somewhere else, but just for now I bought the Anaheim, Carabelle, 
Corno di Toro, yellow. Mulatto is Leno, pepper. Grand Rio Verde, Verde, bleh. Grand Rio Verde, Tomatillo, and Purple Tomatillo. And I am giving them two different clips so that I can find my tomatillos later. This is how it's looking right now. So I've got flowers, broccoli, um, different cabbages, cat grass, and other things that are mixed together in order. Um, edible chrysanthemum, cucumbers, which I might re reorganize cucumbers by my squash and pumpkins and melons, um, eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, tomatillos. Here I have all roots. So I have beet, carrot, onions, um, parsnip, turnips, radishes. Here I have all my greens. So I have like all the mixed greens. Different, many different types. And then I have kale, lettuce, Swiss chard, and different kinds of spinach and spinach substitutes. And then over here, I have beans, peas, corn, and I'm not sure in sunflowers how I'm going to fit the squash in here. I might need to put the squash behind the lettuce. We'll see. I'm going to organize the squash by summer squash versus winter squash. So for the summer squash, I've got the crookneck, lemon, green scallop, got a couple of those, yellow scallop, these mature so fast, black beauty zucchini, and Italian striped zucchini, and these are all bush, the bush formation, um, so that's I'm not going to take up as much space and they're much faster to produce. Summer squash. And for the squash, um, I only have two packets of the winter bush, table king bush acorn squash, and those are a bush type. The rest of these are going to be vining types and they're all winters. So I've got black futsu, baby boo pumpkin, which is just, for me, it's just for ornamental. Is it edible? The flavor is sweet, uh, deep sweet, and very string free. So I guess it is a good one for pies. But I thought it was super cute. Um, Gill's Golden Pippin Squash. It's a winter vine. Golden Hubbard. Got several Golden Hubbards. And there's a reason for that. Okay. Um, delicious in pies. Cut into serving size pieces and baked, steamed, boiled, or mashed. So it seems pretty versatile. And it says it's easy to grow and very prolific. That's why I got so many. Kabucha squash. Musk de Maroc. And Waltham butternut. So I probably butchered some of those names. My apologies. But these are going to get all um, rubber banded up. Here are the melons I chose, Banana Melon, Hale's Best Jumbo Cantaloupe, Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe, Rocky Four Cantaloupe, which looks to me like a honeydew, but we'll see how it tastes. Um, the Green Flesh Honeydew, Noir Days Carm Carms, oh my goodness, you guys, I can't even read. Um, melon, Watermelons, we've got Cal Sweet, Charleston Gray, and Jubilee and Moon and Stars. So those are all going to go together. And I've got some Lucy Goosey Sea Packs. I've got the Saltwort, Goji Berries, Black Sesame, Lemon Mint, Fennel, and Lemongrass. And those are going to go to the left side in alphabetical order. And here is how it looks. I am super tired, but I've got the flowers and all the brassicas, loosey goosey stuff over here. Then I've got all of my things I need to start early, like my eggplants, to peppers, tomatoes, tomatillos. Um, I got all my uh, all my greens and leafy crops here, and then I've got all of my root crops there. Then here I have all my beans and peas and sunflowers, 
And then I have all my corn, melons, cucumbers, and squash and pumpkins. So this is ready so that is to be put away. And took a bit of time, but I'm so glad I got these. These are my backups. And as I'm going through my other seeds, I'm going to make sure that I use the oldest ones first and get a rotation system under control. So these are to refill the spots I have that I'm missing other places. And I'm going to use the old ones before I use any of the new ones. All right, everybody. God bless. I hope you noticed some tips I use, like using these. These are very helpful. Honestly, these are great. These are awesome. You can get packages of these, like a dozen or something from the Dollar Tree. I don't think you get quite as many of these, but I love these as well. So um, those are great. One perk about the clothespins is you can draw on them or write words on them. One downside is that they're pretty long and if there's lots of packets, it doesn't work as well. So these are great. Um, either the colorful, they're plastic coated wires or the binder clips. Those are fabulous. So I think I'm going to go to a system like this. It makes it much easier, more accessible. I've got those totes that I got from uh, Michael's. They come with like multiple different colors. I think they're really pretty. And I have them alphabetized, but then I have to open up each individual container to go through them. And I've got multiple containers, A through Z. So it's like A through Z, and then there's like a half a dozen of them. So um, having something like this, where it's just easy to get to it, and then I replenish it from other stock, I think is going to be very, very helpful in organizing my seeds. So I'm interested, how do you organize your seeds? And... I mean, if you have a lot of seeds, I'm really interested because if you only have a little bit, it's, it's easy. You could use a recipe holder for those or a shoe, a shoe holder or something, um, or just one of those plastic totes with individual, um, containers, which I've had many, many, many of those I'm looking for. If you have massive amounts of seeds, how do you organize them so that you're not constantly accidentally buying duplicates now i purposely buy duplicates at times but how do you minimize some uh accidental repurchasing and then how do you ensure that your seeds are being used in the old as the age as they age out so for instance i have totes that i have from years ago i'm going to make sure i use those before i touch these at all unless there's a variety in here that i don't have already that's the only time I'm going to like supersede my rotation. All right. So the reason why I got these seeds together was because I am concerned about food security and um, the safety of our seeds in terms of keeping them non-GMO, um, the prevalence of bioengineered materials and foods. I call them materials or products, not even food. Um, and so the only way to know that you're getting something healthy is to grow it yourself. God bless you. Live long and prosper. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.